you guys, it's Judy here with my life as Geek Eye. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join the Geek Eye family. And if you're returning here on my channel, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial on this look that I have going on right here. It is bright, colorful, and created with none other than the James Charles eyeshadow palette Unleash Your Inner Artist. I have not done a makeup look like this on my eyes in a minute and I have just been so inspired to do something like that because I mean look at the colors in this palette. I am 120% sure that you guys have seen this eyeshadow palette floating around on the market and not only that, I do have a giveaway up on my channel and I'm giving away three of these eyeshadow palettes to three of you guys. So I will leave that video linked in the description box down below. Definitely go check it out. And the details of that video, whether or not it is still open, depending on when you're watching this video, will also be in the description box down below. So before I get into this makeup tutorial, if you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so you can turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of those uploads. You can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are Life as Geek Eye. And without further ado, let's get into this makeup tutorial. To start off this makeup look, I am priming my eyelids first with the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Eyeshadow Primer and I'm just applying that liberally and working that into the skin. Now going into the James Charles Morphe palette, I'm going to be taking that bright white eyeshadow there and using this to set down that eyeshadow primer. I'm also using that white shadow, building it up on my eyelids to provide a light base for the bright colors that I'm going to be building on top. Using a flat packing brush, I'm going into the shade 518 and using that brush to lay down the color on the outer part of my eye. I'm now going into the fluffy brush into the shade Tune and using that to apply into my transition. Next, I'm going to go in with that packing brush again and go into the shade B and apply this on the absolute inner corners of my eyes. I just took my time laying down that color to get the color payoff and intensity of yellow that I wanted. Taking a fluffy blending brush, I'm going to go into the shade Rusted and use this to sort of gradient the colors of the orange and the yellow together. I'm not straying very far away from that area there. Taking the Morphe M44 blending brush, I'm going to go into the shade You're Kidding and use this to deepen out the outer corner of my eye. Taking the fluffy blending brush again into the shade Rusted, I am just reapplying that there to give myself a bit of gradient. Next, I'm going to go into that amazing neon bright pink in the shade Skip and use this to apply more color above my transition. Now I'm going to go in with that packing brush again into the shade B and re-intensify the yellow on the inner corners of my eyes. Now I'm taking that Wet n Wild packing brush, going into the shade Escape and using this to now deepen up the outer corners of my eyes. As you can see, I'm just laying down the color without straying too far away from the area that I want that color and just taking my time and really packing it in and building it up. Going in with that blending brush again, I'm going to use that to blend out the edges of the shade Escape. I'm not using any extra product here, I'm just going in with a very light hand. Now I'm taking the same brush into the shade Single and using this to again gradient the edges of the shade Escape into my transition. As you can see there, first I was laying down the pigment with a packing brush and then going in afterwards with a blending brush to blend out the edges. I found that I got the best color payoff using this technique. Now with a fluffy blending brush, I'm going to take the shade 518 and the shade Rusted, mix the two together and reapply that above my transition there. Next, taking the Maybelline Master Conceal Concealer and a packing brush, I use this to now cut my crease. First, I lay down the concealer, sort of open my eyes to smudge above my crease to show up to where I need to bring the concealer. This is just a technique that I've found that helps me know how far up I need to bring my concealer in a way that it will show on my eyelid but not look too overdone. I'm just taking my time with this and building up that concealer so as to give myself a good smooth base. Next, I'm going to take the Wet n Wild packing brush into the shade Skip and I started building up this pigment on top of where I applied the concealer. There was a lot of back and forth going into the pigment and then patting in that pigment on top of the concealer. I then went in with a smaller, more detailed packing brush 
and used that to apply the shade skip up until where the edge of my cut crease came. Now I'm taking my finger into that gorgeous purple glittery shade called Artistry and then I'm giving it a slight mist. I thought using my finger would give me the best color payoff for this pigment but after a little bit of playing around and experimentation, I found that my finger wasn't the best for that and I went in with a tight, more detailed packing brush. Again, it took a little bit of patience applying and building up that pigment. Next, I'm going to go in with a fluffy blending brush into the shade Love That. I use this to blend in the edges between Artistry and the shade Escape, just deepening up the outer edge of my eye look. I also used my finger to apply that pigment just to build up the color even more and give myself that gradient effect between the shade Artistry and the shade Escape. I found that using my finger was a very effective way to lay down the colors and then again went in with a fluffy blending brush to blend out the edges. I'm now using a makeup wipe to clean up all the fallout under my eyes. Then I'm going in with my base. First, I apply my Kedma Cosmetics Active Serum. This is more of a skincare item, but I find that using this item first before the rest of my makeup gives me a very smoothing effect. Now I'm going in with my Jericho Cosmetics Restoring Day Cream to moisturize my skin. And now I'm going in with my Ride or Die Mecca Cosmetica Smoothing Primer. I find that this primer is very, very effective to smooth out all the fine lines and wrinkles and to fill in my pores. Now I'm going in with my L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Matte Foundation. I find that the coverage on this isn't too thick and it's absolutely beautiful on my skin. Now I'm going in with a L'Oreal Infallible Contour Stick. It's not really a contour stick, it is a foundation stick, but I'm using it as contour. As you can see, it is a shade much too dark for my skin tone, but it works and blends out beautifully as contour. And I'm just blending all of that into the skin. I'm using a Morphe Beauty Sponge to blend all of this in. Next, I'm going in with my Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer and using this to highlight under the eyes, forehead, down my nose, on my upper lip, and just above my jawline. And again, blending all of that in with my Morphe Beauty Sponge. I just love how this concealer looks on my skin. It's absolutely beautiful, especially when I take my time and really work it into the skin. Next, I'm going in with my RCA Make Translucent No Color Powder and using this to set in that concealer. I'm not really baking with it, I just want to set in that concealer because I didn't want too much of a powdery look on my face. Next, I'm using the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist to just melt all of that in together onto my skin. Now I'm taking my Morphe Bronzer in the shade Vlogger and just using this to give myself a little bit more shape, warmth and dimension to my face. Now I'm going in with a Juvia's Place Saharan 2 Blush Palette and just taking those two shades, tapping off the excess because it is quite an intense blush and just blending this lightly on my cheeks, on my nose, forehead, chin, just everywhere I want to warm up my face. Now I'm going in with a ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliner. I'm not quite sure what the shade is but it's just a nice white eyeliner. You can use any that you have and I'm just using this to line my waterline. Now I'm going to go in with a fine tipped angled brush going into the shade Acapella and using this to start to line my lower lash line. And then I'm just going to gradient the shade Playground along right next to it. Then I'm going to go into the shade Social Blade and just gradient that in along the shade Playground. Now I'm going to go back into that yellow shade and apply that right to the inner corner of my lower lash line. Going into that beautiful white shade flashback and using this to brighten up the inner corners of my eyes and also to highlight under my brows. I really like that highlighted under brow look. Now I'm going to go in with a slightly fluffier blending brush and just blending out that shade acapella under my lower lash line. Again, going in with the same brush into the shade social blade and just using that different brush to blend out the lower lash line. I'm going in with my finger again into the shade Escape and Single and using that to deepen out the outer corners of my eyes. Now I'm going in with the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara and my Maybelline Monster Graphic Eyeliner and just applying those. It is so incredibly easy for me to do eyeliner with this pen. Unfortunately, this one has been discontinued, but if you can find an eyeliner with a felt tip similar to this, I'm guaranteeing you it is so incredibly easy to do a beautiful sharp tipped wing eyeliner very quickly and very easily. I'm also redefining my beauty spot 
And then going in with a finer tipped eyeliner, I'm just sharpening up the flick of that eyeliner. Curling my lashes and going in with an intense coat of the mascara. I know this look would have probably benefited from a really gorgeous fluffy set of falsies, but I don't actually have any, so I just had to make do with the mascara. Setting all of that down again with my Morphe Continuous Mist, I'm now going to go into that highlight shade called Face and just go in over on the high points of my face while my face is still misty from the setting spray. As you can see, it took a bit of time to build up that highlight. I was really digging into the shade, but with just a bit of patience and blending, I managed to build up that highlight to an intensity that I was happy with. Now taking my finger into that shade Ring Light, I used that to further brighten the inner corners of my eyes. Now I'm going to go into my Ofra Cosmetics Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Charmed, filled my lips with that, and then I went over the top of that with the Ultra Glossy Lip by Bretman Rock and ColourPop in the shade Kumquat. And I love the way that it gives my lips this gorgeous, glistening, wet sort of look. See, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look that I came up with. I was kind of just like making it up as I went along and just tried to imagine what the colors would look like next to each other. So yeah, I really had so much fun doing this look. I had so much fun. I haven't done any bright, colorful looks like this on my eyes in such a hot minute. So it was kind of refreshing to be able to do something like this with this many colors on my eyes. I do have a couple things to say about the pigments in this palette. In James Charles' launch video, he explained exactly what the formulation was of the pressed pigments. So pressed pigments are literally the color squashed down into, not squashed, but pressed down into a pan, whereas eyeshadows have other things mixed in through with them. So he was explaining in his video that the best way to apply these pressed pigments is to first apply an eyeshadow base, which is what I did as you saw in the video. I set it down with this white powder here, and then I applied all the pressed pigments on top of that with a patting motion. I used a flat packing brush and then blended it out afterwards. I was finding that the fluffy blending brush wasn't really helping apply the pigment with the best color payoff. So what I did was I used a flat packing brush and then blended out the edges as necessary. As you also might have seen through the video, I was using my finger to reapply the darker corners out here on the outer corners of my eye and even using my finger a fair bit to blend out some of the edges because I was finding that using a blending brush was actually taking off the pigment and leaving little patchy areas. So once you've actually learned how to use the palette, it is a whole lot more easier to use. Don't be discouraged if you're finding that the colors are sort of fluffing off because they are pressed pigments. You have to use a special technique to apply them to get the best color payoff. So if you do have this palette, definitely have a bit of a play. It is really, really good. You just got to know how to use the different formulations in these shadows because not all of them are eyeshadows majority of them are pressed pigments. So yeah, that's it for this video. That's all I've got to say about this eyeshadow palette. If you guys want to see more looks using this eyeshadow palette, I know I could make a hundred million different more looks using this because I mean, like, look at it. It's just so freaking beautiful. Again, you guys, please join my giveaway. I'm giving away three of these eyeshadow palettes to three of my subscribers. The details of that giveaway video will be in the description box down below. So definitely go check it out. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. You can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are live as Geek Guide. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here, and I really appreciate that you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! I'm alone in my house. Look what I found. You know, this video is demonetized.